Hello, today we are going to install the Stacks module. The first thing you want to do is have a Drupal 8 installation you can work with. Next, you will want to download the Stacks module and put it in your modules folder, and then open the README file. This file goes into details on how to install the module as well as other advanced functionality. Next, you will want to download the module dependencies. In this case, I also downloaded the chosen JavaScript library and put it in my libraries folder. If you have any questions on how to install those dependencies, you can reference each of those Drupal.org project pages. And lastly, I installed a very basic front-end theme that just uses the Bartik theme as the base theme. Whichever you use from your end, you will want to make sure it is enabled and set as your default front-end theme. Otherwise, it will not read the correct template directory. From here, we can install the module. We're only going to enable the core module. When you install, you'll probably end up getting this, there isn't a stacks directory in the theme error. And that's because as part of the installation, we need to copy a directory. So to do that, you go to your stacks module directory, and then you copy the stacks directory from there. And you'll want to paste it into your front end theme. Now, the stacks directory is where all your template variations for each widget are stored. The top level folder, folders that are listed under stacks, uh, represent each of the widgets you have. And then if you go under that level, you will see a templates folder, and these are this is where each template variation is stored. There's also an image directory where you can uh, place a preview image that will display in the admin to give uh, content editors a visual representation of each variation. In this case, we do not have any preview images set so that the, the image directory is empty. So once we do that, we're going to want to clear the Drupal cache. And that should make the air go away. From here, you will want to add the stacks field to whichever content types you want to enable the system on. So let's go enable it on the basic page content type. Select the stacks field and give it a name. You'll want to make sure you select unlimited. Otherwise, it, it will only allow you to enter one widget per page. In this case, we want to allow unlimited widgets on each page. Click Save. And then Save Settings. Now, this adds the field, but we do not have any enabled widgets for that field. To do that, you'll want to click on your Manage Form Display tab, and then click on the Settings for the Stacks field, and check all of the enabled widget types you will want available for this Stacks field. There are other sections here that give you options for adding required widgets. And you can play with those, and these are documented in the README file if you have any questions on how those work. But for now, let's click Update, and then Save. And then if we go to Add a New Node, we will see our stack section here, which is the stacks field we added to this content type. I'm going to give this a name, and then I'm going to click Add New Widget. The widgets we enabled for this field are, will show up in the dropdown. So in this case, I'm going to add a text widget. I'm going to call it text widget number one. And then all of the variations or templates that are available for the widget type you selected will show up here. 
In this case, there is no preview image for this variation, which is the default variation. So that's selected and we can click next. On the next page, you will see all of the fields that are attached to that widget type. So there's a text field. I'm just going to enter. And then an image. And then add a widget. I'm also going to add a custom HTML widget. And then I'm going to move the custom widget above the text widget and hit save. Now when you view the front end of this widget page, you will see a listing of all the widgets that were added to this page. So we have our custom HTML widget at the top, and then we have our text widget. Now, the HTML that is being output for each widget is determined by the template or variation you select, and that will load the correct template file in your theme. So if I open the text widget and go to templates default, this is the HTML that is being hit. Now, if you update it, you will want to make sure to, to clear cache. And there is a way to avoid having to clear cache when you work locally by enabling the twig debug mode, but in this case I do not have it enabled. So I updated the template, I clicked, I cleared the cache, and then if I refresh the page, it has my updates in there. One other thing I'll mention briefly is um, the system works around the ability to have variations for each widget. So let's say we have a use case where we want a new variation for, a, for the text widget. I can just copy the default variation and I'm going to give this variation a name called uh, Cool Variation. From here, I'm going to clear cache. And then I'm going to edit this page I'm working with. And I'm going to add a new text widget. And as we can see here, it added this new text widget variation to the bottom. So I'm just going to call this So we can see here, it's hitting my new uh, variation template that I added. And this gives us a lot of flexibility in adding variations to each widget. That covers it for our widget installation tutorial. If you encounter any issues or problems, please post on the project issue queue.